Hey guys, this is Steve Garber with ModCube, and I'm here to hopefully give you a quick overview of the Form 1 Plus 3D printer. Now, I've actually owned the Form 1 since um, uh, the Kickstarter. I was a Kickstarter backer, and so I had the original Form 1, not the Form 1 Plus, and um, they operate pretty much identically. It's just the Form 1 Plus has some improvements, like I think it has a, a more powerful laser, and I've noticed a lot better performance from the Form 1 Plus uh, since I've gotten the upgrade. So, uh, here I have the Form 1 uh, preform software and the Form 1 sitting next to it. And you can see on the screen, I've got a few uh, parts that I've printed. And I've actually already got them printed out on the printer so you don't have to wait uh, for that or have to turn off the video and come back to it. So, uh, these are some parts that I've printed. And you can see these are actually the prototype mod cubes. I've printed a whole lot of these things. And uh, the printer has just come in super handy for that. So here's how uh, you do some uh, functions with the preform software. You can see you've got this row of icons on the side. Uh, one is to scale the part. One is to orient it, generate supports, move it on the build platform or create duplicates, and finally uh, send it to the printer. So I'm just going to create a duplicate to play around with. And you can see that I can move it freely around the platform. And one thing you'll have to get the hang of is clicking on these different icons. So now if I want to rotate it, I have to click on this orientation icon. And now if I grab it, the supports will disappear and I can just spin it around in place. Generally, you don't want to leave a surface completely flat. You can see that I have these parts tilted. Uh, if you have a surface completely level with the build platform, that whole layer has to cure at once. And so you tend to get poor performance. So for example, here's a part I printed the other day. You can see that uh, uh, it's on a slant. And that's so that this bottom edge will actually come out uh, and be able to have multiple layers supporting that edge. All right, so we're on the orientation tab. And you know it's just like any CAD software where you can use the different mouse buttons to rotate your view. And I've rotated this around. I'm selected on this particular uh, instance of the part, and I'm going to hit Supports here. I can choose Generate Selected, or if I deselect it, I can hit Generate All. So I'm going to uh, generate, and I generally find that the lowest density is the best, as, along with the lowest point size. Uh, uh, they, there can be a lot of supports otherwise, so I'm going to hit Generate Selected. You can see it working and there you go those actually look pretty pretty nice now if you want to you know if there's a support on a key feature let's say you're printing a model and you don't like one of these supports you can always delete it so this one would concern me because this is a mating surface and it kind of uh, is, is on that surface so I would select this hit edit selected I'm gonna click on remove and I can just remove that support Add, and I'm going to add one back in that's not hanging over that edge. Apply changes. So you can see that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, you get the hang of it, how to orient parts, but honestly, that's a, that's a really nice uh, orientation. I might save that one. <laughs> All right, and then uh, again, you just go back and you can, you can duplicate that part uh, and, and lay it out on the build platform. I find that I don't generally space parts much closer than then this, um, you know, you've got your guidelines so you don't go too close to the edge. Um, uh, if you space them too close, if you have any errors, they can start to affect one another. Uh, and I realized I did skip one thing, so if I were to just uh, do a new file, let's say, it's going to ask me if I want to save. I'll go ahead and save. It's going to prompt me for layer thickness and material. So I've been printing in black. Uh, with a resolution of 25 microns. 50 microns is really nice for just testing out a part uh, and getting it to print in half the time, but uh, 20 my, 25 microns is where you get the real uh, nice results. And that's about it. One other thing you can do, oh, and so once, once I'm in new, I can open, and then I can open an STL file. Uh, I think the, uh, that part I showed earlier is here, so I'll just pull that out as an example. 
you can rotate it around, that would be way too steep, but you'd want to get on a slight tilt before you print it. And I really like getting things on an edge, so that's a little steeper than I would usually want it. Um, let me just go ahead and generate supports for the purpose of this, but again, point size, you might want to bring that down a little bit, density. And you'll get the hang for how far over you can tilt apart before uh, it's going to want to put extra supports under it. So now I've got this nice long edge of supports underneath the edge and there won't be a whole lot of cleanup to do there. So that's pretty nice. Again, it might not need to be quite that tilted. It's only going to use 8.9 milliliters of material. I'm not sure if that shows up on the screen. And you can actually calculate the print time as well. All right, so that's a lot of boring stuff about the software. Also note that when you open the software, it may prompt you to upgrade the firmware on the printer, uh, which I tend not to do because you know it's working for me well, but you can always uh, upgrade that uh, if it prompts you to do it. All right, so let's look a, bit, a little bit at the printer itself. And that would be a eight hour print job. So at 25 microns, you're gonna set this and forget it. Uh, all right, but so let's look at the printer itself. And you see that you've got, let me move this laptop out of the way. All right, so you see that you've got your printer here. your build platform and you can see those two parts that I was just showing on the screen came out quite nicely. They've got a lot of uncured resin on them so you can't really see the detail until later on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my finishing kit and put that on the tray here. So here is the finishing kit. And you just drop your build platform onto this lip. Now note that uh, it comes with a few extra things. It comes with a squirt bottle for alcohol, which is useful, a scraper, the tweezers I never really use, and you'll want to get a timer to know how long uh, to rinse your parts for. So once you've printed your parts, it's really easy to just pop them off. Usually there's, a, there's an edge where they build in a kind of slanted point on the base. So you can just pop it right off. You don't have to even use much force. Um, if you're not under that slanted point, you're just trying to kind of scrape sideways, you know, just, just push on it. I mean, that will take a lot of force, but if you can find an edge to get under, you can just kind of lever it up nice and easy. Now, the key I have found uh, after a lot of failed prints with the earlier form ones was you really want to scrape this build platform clean. So I'm going to take my scraper here and even though it's a waste of resin, I just scrape it all off. And you actually want a scratched up build platform, you'll get better results that way. So I just scrape the heck out of this thing. And then I would just put it back on the printer. Now, one thing to note is that I am using paper towels to clean off my scraper. Just make sure you don't have any debris on your from the paper towels because they leave a lot of small particles and you don't want to get any of that uh, into your printer. So you want to make sure everything's scraped off and uh, nice and pristine. Now, another thing I would do before actually starting a print job is I would actually scrape off I would gently scrape the bottom of my build platform. So, I'm sorry, the bottom of my resin tray. So, I'm not sure how it'll show up on the camera, but I do this motion and I just make sure that no resin is really adhered to the bottom. I'll switch hands so it might show up a little bit better. No resin is adhered to the bottom of that tray, nice and gentle. There's a silicone layer, you'll feel it. 
And if you had any failed prints, you would you would see uh, maybe some debris and could dislodge it if it was stuck to the bottom of the tray with your scraper nice and gently. This is the tool, pretty much the only tool that I use, maybe the tweezers every once in a while. And it probably won't show up in the video, but I'm going to pull this resin back just in case it does. I can actually see some shadows of where I'm, uh, I've been doing a lot of prints. And so this spill, this tray, this resin tray is right at the end of its life. I think they now recommend only three months use per tray or two liters of resin. Another thing you'll notice if you start to get some failed prints is you may get just kind of debris in your resin. And in that case, I found that these 190 micron filters, you can pour the resin into this, into some sort of container, filter out all your junk, pour the resin back into your tray. Uh, that's kind of if you've just got a really nasty tray full of debris. I actually haven't had to do that since getting the Form 1 Plus uh, and really scraping my build platform after every print, and maybe even before print, uh, if it's for any reason gone back down into the resin. You want this nice and dry before it uh, begins a print. I think my most common mode of failure before was the first layer not adhering to the build platform. Uh, again, that's not on this printer, but on my prior versions. And uh, I think that was a lot due to the resin on the tray. Uh, so if you scrape that nice and dry, you should get that first layer adhering and then uh, you know the rest of the print can proceed from there. All right, so you saw me earlier. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I don't usually leave this open this long. And off screen, I've got a whole bunch of paper towels because that's just what you do when you've got all this liquid resin. You need a nice clean space for this. And you can go ahead and put your build platform back on. And the last step, I think is, this has got a little bit long, is you're going to want to use 90% alcohol. So something like this. And you've got that in your rinsing tray here. And you just shake it for two minutes. I like to have my parts kind of at the surface of the alcohol, just in that froth, getting nice and uh, shaken in the alcohol. And then you'll kind of let it sit for 10 minutes after that. And I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. But once your parts come out, you can clip off the supports with any nice clippers, nice and flush. You can also sand it, but that tends to deface the surface a little bit. So I find just clipping as close as I can is the best. And you'll definitely want to get a timer to know how long your parts sit in the alcohol for. And again, the squirt bottle is handy just for cleaning off your tools, such as your scraper. I didn't really show that here, but... Um, you're always going to just wipe off your scraper with the alcohol. One thing to note is you don't want to get any alcohol in your resin or you know anywhere near your print. So if you've used alcohol on your scraper and then scrape the build platform, give it a little time before you start a print. And you know don't put alcohol on your scraper right before you uh, kind of gently uh, move it along the surface of the resin tray because uh, you don't want to mix any alcohol in your resin. And again, with your paper towels, or even the clothes you're wearing, make sure you've got nothing with particles near your resin tray when this is open. Otherwise, you'll see the particles and you'll want to kind of get them out and you don't want anything getting in that resin tray. Uh, finally, uh, you know, again, these resin trays, you just treat them really well. Uh, you don't get anything on the bottom of the resin tray. Um, I generally just leave it in there the whole time. I generally print with one resin tray until it's completely done. Um, if you do take it out, they do provide a cover, so they provide this thing that you can put on top of it, but, you know, I'm just not sure how, how well you can really have a resin tray full of resin sitting and not in use. Uh, you generally want to be using it uh, at least every few weeks uh, if you can. I think that's really about it. If you have any questions, feel free to post a comment or send me a message. Thanks so much.